Good morning, everybody. The following comments are taken from editions of Mail Call, printed in the Herald Mail from July 25th through August 5th, 2011, which can be viewed online in their entirety at www.herald-mail.com. That's right, no fucking around. First up from Hagerstown. The person who made a comment about being a Christian and having a problem with gay marriages. Yes, if you're a born-again Christian, and I didn't say just a Christian because that's the easiest way for people to say things. If you're a born-again Christian and you know your Bible is true, and if you want to know if it's acceptable to God or not, read Genesis and you'll know your answer. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. I assume you're primarily referring to the story of Sodom and Gomorrah in the book of Genesis. You know, I've always found it odd that Christians so commonly interpret that as a story about God punishing homosexuality when the actual sin of the people of Sodom seems to be how incredibly rape-happy they are. That Christians can read a story that features God destroying a city full of people that had just tried to gang-rape two of his angels and then say, see, God was punishing them for their permissive attitude toward gay people, tells me a little bit about their God and a little bit more about them. Actually, a lot more about them because they're the ones that made their God up. Yeah. Got to bring it out early this time, huh? The Republicans in Congress want the middle class and the poor to pay taxes while the corporations and the rich pay virtually nothing. I have a suggestion. Let's all of us band together and not pay one cent of our taxes until they pony up their fair share. How does that sound to all of you out there? Flintstone, Maryland. Sounds like most of us will have fun starving to death and killing each other after the economy collapses and the government crumbles while the rich are settling into their new homes along the sunny coast of South America. I'd like to ask you teapot people one thing. How do you sleep at night? You're willing to cut services for poor families, cut food off for poor children, yet you're not wanting to raise taxes on your wealthy friends, not one cent. How do you sleep at night? If you profess to be Christians, I'm pretty sure Jesus took care of the poor, not the rich. He said, the rich man will not make it to heaven, or something like that. How do you sleep at night? Hagerstown. Good question. And it just so happens we have an actual teapot person from a few days later to answer it. To the Hagerstown caller talking about the teapot people, how do you sleep at night? Well, it is tea party. But since you mentioned about what Jesus said about the poor, he said that it's our job to take care of the poor, not our government. I think I know a lot more better places how to give my money to the poor than what the government can. Have you ever heard of government waste? Plus, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, Jesus says, if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. Boonesboro. Actually, Jesus doesn't say shit in 2 Thessalonians because by the time it was written, he'd been dead for 20 years. 2 Thessalonians, like most of the New Testament, was written by someone who never even met Jesus, who never even claimed to have met Jesus. Paul. And Paul was an asshole. This is in response to the Sharpsburg caller who's thanking Neil Parrott for putting in the vote against illegal immigrants. I'm so tired of everybody from the Tea Party and others like the Sharpsburg caller talking about illegal immigrants and how our forefathers will be spinning in their graves. Our forefathers were illegal immigrants. All they had to do was step out of Virginia and they were in another country. The whole state of Texas, when we went down there, belonged to Mexico. They need to stop worrying about illegal immigrants and quit being afraid of people they don't know. Hagerstown. Sure, that'll happen. Asking the Tea Party to cut out the racism and xenophobia is like asking the Red Sox to knock off the baseball. This is to the person in the black car down at the parking lot on the CNO Canal last Saturday, who pulled out right in front of us when we were on our motorcycle. You didn't even care that we were right in front of you when you pulled out. You surely couldn't have missed us with all the lights that are on our bike. You, mister, are the reason for all these motorcycle accidents. And when you stopped going up the hill after I so calmly gave you the famous sign for morons, boy, did we wish you would have came back down or backed up. We would have shown you what it's all about for all us motorcycle riders. Hagerstown.
<laughs> Whatever, dude. That day I decided not to get out of my car when you gave me the finger was the luckiest day of your fucking life. You think I sweat some bike riding sweat hog? I've beaten up ninth graders, okay? And I'm on the internet. I'd like to say I agree with the caller from Hagerstown that Obama acts like he is a king. Not only that, all the Democrats think they are above the law also, that they can do what they want to. Blue Ridge Summit, Pennsylvania. Right. Obama's drunk with power. That's why he refused to issue an executive order invoking Section 4 of the 14th Amendment to avoid a default because his lawyers told him the president doesn't have that authority. Just like a king. Here's someone else bitching about an imaginary version of President Obama from a few days later. Boo-hoo President Obama. He wants change, but only if he gets his way. A real leader would be in the war room with his sleeves rolled up, helping to come up with a plan rather than appearing on TV. He uses Social Security, Medicare, and veterans to scare the citizens so he can ignore the meat of the proposals and the real problem, his need to raise the debt ceiling to continue to be able to spend, spend, spend without ever being responsible. Learn to speak Chinese. You may need it if he's elected again. William Sport. Is this the new strategy? Take all the arrogance and recklessness and childishness displayed by the Republicans in Congress during the debt crisis and pretend that it was President Obama that actually did all of that? Because that'll probably work. You know, I don't believe this. I'm ready to watch Master Chef on TV tonight at 9 o'clock, and guess who's on TV again for the umpteenth time? That's right, President Obama. In just two and a half years, he's probably been on TV more times than Bush and Clinton put together. He can't snowball the American people anymore. Take responsibility and stop blaming everyone else for the mess you got us in. William Sport. <laughs> My, my reality show was preempted by the President of the United States addressing the nation on a serious and urgent situation that might have had consequences for people not only in this country but all over the world. And I, I, I wanted to watch Master Chef. <laughs> I think they should show those images of abortion to show what a horrific thing abortion is. If we had never seen the images of the Holocaust during World War II, we would never have believed that people could do such things to human beings. Abortion is the murder of innocent babies who have the right under God to live and have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Hagerstown. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but when people in this country finally saw images from the Holocaust, they weren't looking at pictures blown up to hundreds of times their subjects' actual size displayed on public roadsides for all to see, right? This never happened, did it? It's a real shame to see in the Hagerstown paper this morning about the soldier who was prosecuted over in Afghanistan for killing the citizen. How many citizens did they kill over here in the U.S. on 9-11? That's a real shame. Hagerstown. So, it's not okay for them to murder us, but we should feel at liberty to murder them? No, and you know what? There is no them, all right? The victim was an electrician who, for all I know, had nothing to do with Al-Qaeda or 9-11 or any of that. The soldier, National Guardsman Sergeant Derek Miller, sat on top of this man, Atta Muhammad, and shot him in the head at point-blank range. He was convicted at his court-martial of premeditated murder and sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole. And if you ask me, it's that last part that is the real shame. The park in Funkstown is a nice little park. When it was first put in, it used to be the commons. All you old-timers will remember that. You know what? This sounds like something Walter Brennan should have read. It's like a wistful glance cast back toward days long gone by. 
or something. Can we wistful this shit up a little bit? Okay, much better. <clears throat> the park in Funkstown is a nice little park. When it was first put in, used to be the commons. All you old timers will remember that. It was also called H.T. Harp. It was named after Henry Harp. The sign got knocked down, torn down, and just blew away. I was promised by one of the councilmen that it would be replaced. Come on, let's get the sign back up. In memory of Henry. Let's go, fellas. Hagerstown. Huh? How old was I when I first seen old Rivers? I can't remember when he went around. And finally, from Downsville, these abortion clinics. They should not have these abortion clinics. That's murder, and murderers will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Why can they get away with it? They should close them down. Oh my God, is it murder? I've never, I've never heard that before, and murderers can't enter the kingdom of heaven? I... Oh, dear Lord, you have changed my entire outlook on this issue. It, I am totally against having legal abortion now. It, it's, wow. I haven't experienced such a sudden and, and drastic reversal in my thinking since I saw that a gun in the hand is better than a cop on the phone bumper sticker. Whew. Wow. Thanks for watching.